Hi everyone, now oh, there's a wizard. Yeah. We're off to kill the wizard, the wonderful <coughs> wizard of darkness. Oh god. Because, oh, because, no. because, 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 because. Think of the bolts that he throws us. I know, I'm not musically coordinated. Shut up. Let me just enjoy these. Yo, Damn it! <laughs> I spoke them all over the clean rug. Nope. <laughs> what was that stupid rule? Like the two second rule? Five second rule. I keep hearing three second, five second, and ten seconds. Mm. There was a comedy that was going to be on TV ages ago, mm. but it got it ended up getting canceled. I think after two episodes, so it wasn't that good. Jeez. Yeah, but um, one of the uh, commercials I saw for it at the time was that because it was like a restaurant thing, mm. and um, uh, one of the characters dropped like a steak on the ground or some shit, shit like that. Or Oy. Yeah, yeah. And the guy was like, free. I was like, five second rule, five second rule. So the guy kind of just looks at it for like five seconds, waits an extra second or so, picks it up, and he's like, oh, snap, we could, snap, we would have gone to like the 10 second rule. Just had like a, you know, kind of a jackass kind of response for that. Jeez. I was like. I can see why that was canceled. <laughs> yeah. It did not seem that funny either. I don't know. To me, as soon as something falls on the floor, game over. I mean, again, I'm not a, pr tr a pampered chef. I'm not a trained chef by any stretch of the imagination. But as soon as my food or ingredients go someplace I don't normally put things there, it's no good. Right. So like every time I make a chicken wrap or whatever, salad, meatballs, whatever, you name it. Like, heck, you know that uh, cutting board I have? Mm -hmm. Sometimes if my meat falls onto the counter, I don't use that anymore. Mm. I'm like, screw it. That's not what it's supposed to be, even though it's a counter. It's clean most of the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you get beef now. Yeah. Furious and volleyball. <laughs> and I'm messing up. I'm sore. You should probably cure yourself. Power. No. Cure yourself. I wish I can cure myself. But that takes time. Damn sciatica. Anyway. Yeah, slash that wyvern. Wyvern. Mmm. But yeah. I don't know if you stick by the five second rule or three second rule. But me, it's zero seconds. Mm-hmm. Which ironically... I'm gonna leave, but I'm gonna kill the rest of the heartless in this room first. The ironic part is, is I ate the York that was on the carpet for like one second. Uh -huh. I just broke my own rule. I'm dead now. Nice. Yeah. Slash everything. Oh, damn it. You know, speaking of comedies, did you ever see Faulty Towers? Yeah, you showed me. Yeah, I showed you. Uh, what? Did I show you, uh... Because I love British comedies. Did you ever see, uh... Any of the seasons of Black Adder? Yeah, you showed me it. Yeah, I did. What about the Hugh and Laurie show? No, that one I did not see. Ah, damn. That was actually kind of fun. It pretty much... The Hugh and Laurie show, if I remember correctly, is, uh... It's pretty much like a sketch comedy show with just those two. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And what I loved about that show, besides their chemistry... Which, heck, if you've seen Black Adder and the, most of the BBC comedy back in the 80s or whatever... Yeah. Ugh, oh, man. One of these days, I gotta sit you down and you gotta watch an episode of that, because... It's just a fun, like, at the end of each sketch comedy... Mm -hmm. Uh... What's the name of the actor? Lori... You, Lori? No. Oh, I said it wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah. Fry and Hugh. Oh. Hugh. Well, I still haven't seen that. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Oh, shit. I said Hugh and Lloyd. Yeah. I thought you were saying it right. I didn't know what you were talking about, but I thought you were saying it right at least. No, it's not about Stephen Fry and the Hugh Laurie show. Oh, no, I still haven't seen that. Though. Fry and Hugh, oh. Oh. 
It's okay, Matt. It's okay. Oh, big fan of the show, but I can't pinpoint their names. Sorry. <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, at the end of each episode, yeah. Hugh Lloyd would be at the uh, piano just playing gri like, yeah. Grizz for me, whatever. And Stephen Fry would be like, ladies and gentlemen, that would be the end of our program. And so I would like to end it with, like, said drink. And he said he would like to make a drink, and then... Every time Hugh Lloyd says something like, so yeah, we're gonna make a drink, and uh, Stephen Fry would just be like, oh, shut your gibble gobble for it. And then Hugh Lloyd would just be like, instantly, like, okay, I'll shut up. That's not the funny part. The funny part to me has always been like, well, that was really weird tracking. A bit, yeah. So, uh... They would just have like this little session, if you will, where. Hugh Laurie would play the ending theme song while Stephen Fry would just like pick up a whole bunch of random objects and start making a drink out of it. Oh. It, it was just really cute. I mean, it doesn't sound funny the way I say it, but during the entire time, because it only went on for like two seasons. Oh. Well, BBC shows are relatively short, as Stephen that is Fry true. once said. That is true. There's only one that keeps going on and on. Yeah. Oh. And I was kind of hoping on, like, the final episode, when Stephen Fry keeps telling Hugh Lloyd to shut up, I was expecting, oh. like, Lloyd to just go, like, you know what? You keep telling me to do all these things and all that. I have a voice, too, you know? Ah! <laughs> no, he was just like, okay, then. <laughs> Probably because they had other shows with each other, too, so. Man, yeah. They just love working together. I can see why they're amazing. Now that I think about it, I don't think Stephen Fry ever made an appearance on House. Oh, uh, no. No, I don't know. Well, no, I'm saying I don't think I have because I would not because I watched it. You watched the entire seasons? I watched a good chunk of the seasons, yeah. Yeah. Not all. Like, the last, like, maybe three seasons I didn't get to see. Just because at the time I was doing high school stuff. Right, right, right. Or I didn't have a TV anymore, or television. Yeah, that's kind of the weird thing, too, is because I've kind of known Stephen Fry most of my... Well, not me personally, but I've known who he was growing up. Yeah. It's like, okay, that's a funny uh, British dude. Yeah. Hugh Lloyd was kind of like hit or miss for me. The first time I've actually seen him, I want to say is either Stuart Little... Mm. Or the first live action of 101 Dalmatians, where he right. played one of the henchmen. Yeah. And he was just like, yeah, okay, you're, you're Lloyd, He's, you're Lloyd. Yeah. And then, I heard he was really big on House. Yeah. Never seen House, but I'm like, okay, I can kind of see where the charm is. I saw one episode, I think, and mm -hmm. he was interesting. Yeah. He was kind of a masochist, or mm -hmm. sociopath, I don't remember, but yeah. I was like, okay, whatever. Still not too familiar with him. Then I started to watch Black Adder. And Hugh Lloyd was like the dumb prince that I thought yeah. was hilarious. Then he tracked off to being like, just like a royal guy or someone in the military. And he was still being the dumb character. And I thought, man, this guy's funny. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> then I watched the Stephen Fry and Hugh Lloyd show. Which is where I really started to get a good grasp of who he was. <laughs> he was just this proper cross-dressing, hilarious dude. Mm. I'm like, okay, this is your lawyer and I like him. But then when I look back to house, I'm like, damn, that's a transition. Yeah. Because he's a hilarious goofball in that show, but in house, he's like, dead serious already. Dead serious, but a dick. Yeah. Which was the charm. So then I'm like, oh, okay. And I remember, even like within a couple of years, one of the biggest pleasant surprises for me was finding out that, oh, you know that wonderful narrator voice you loved in Little Big Planet, Matt? Well, that's Stephen Fry. <laughs> Damn! I was like, oh, I love it. And then when I heard Little Big Planet 3, the main villain was going to be played by Hugh Laurie, and the narrator is Stephen Fry. I'm like, cash yeah. reunion! Yep. Yeah. Like, I even watched behind the scenes and Hugh Lloyd was like, oh yeah, I'm happy to be in the same project that he's in again. <laughs> but yeah, nah, I love Stephen Fry. He's a really cool dude. Yep. 
Like, I remember one of the other programs I watched on of his was Hugh Laurie... I don't know if it was called Takes America or Tours America. Mm. But the whole premise behind it is that while Hugh Laurie grew up in England, mm -hmm. I believe he was actually born in America, mm. but was raised in England because that's where his father lived, mm -hmm. I think. So he kind of wanted to get back to his roots, so he decided to do this BBC special where I want to say each episode was a section of America and he would visit each and every state and, mm. like, just check it out. Right. And I thought it was kind of a cool show. I mean, it, it's not, like, humorously or anything like that. Except the Thanksgiving episode. That was mm. friggin' hilarious. <laughs> Uh, but he would like go, he would start out with like the northern east coast section with like Maine and uh, Vermont and uh, Massachusetts and all that. Hmm. Yeah, to be quiet. Well, thanks, Cloud, for absolutely nothing. I was just gonna say circle counter him. He only has a sliver of health. Yeah. Or that. Anyway, no, the Thanksgiving one was kind of funny. I mean, I don't remember it entirely, but he, I want to say he was in North Carolina or something like that. And he was just visiting some random family or something. Mm -hmm. And they were having Thanksgiving <laughs> doing the toast. He was saying like, I'd like to raise a toast to thank you guys defecting from our wonderful country. But I'm actually kind of glad because then I wouldn't be able to have this wonderful feast with you guys. It was something along those lines, and I was like... That's I could see it. A little passive-aggressive, but at the same time, kind of a gentleman's way of saying, like, hey, you guys are awesome. Yeah. So. <laughs> and one thing he said, like, one of the states he went to... Yeah. ...had little to no good opinion about mm. was Florida. Mm. Because those episodes were sectioned, like I said, he did uh, Northeast Coast first... Then he did the South, which was like uh, South Carolina and all those sections, mm -hmm. Tennessee, Kentucky. Yeah. But then when he transferred to Florida and kind of went around uh, Miami and a few other well-known places, he said quite clearly he felt that... Wait, did I not? Oh, okay. He said that he felt Florida was a really fake state. Mm-hmm. Meaning, like, he was looking at the beaches and everyone there was, like, really superficial and right. kind of self-centered a bit. And he didn't really like it at all. Mm -hmm. The only good thing he kind of did was he visited, like, an old folks center type thing. Yeah. And he kind of saw, like, the fun they were having at the time, but he kind of felt out of place because he wasn't at that age. Yeah. But that was it for Florida. Florida really got no redeeming qualities in his mind. Yeah, I really have no want to go to Florida. The only way I would recommend Florida is for Disney World. That is true. Because Orlando, I think in my opinion alone, is worth it. Especially if you take it in small doses. Yeah. But in terms of like Miami or all that... <laughs> that's up to interpretation. It depends yeah. on the situation. Like if you're going with like a girlfriend or whatever, then it's like, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Anyway. <coughs> Then he started to go in the more Central Americas, and they are what you kind of expect. Just mm -hmm. unique little doses of cool things. Yeah. And I think it was a nice little special to showcase uh, Stephen Fry enjoying the Americas for their own thing. <laughs> and you could probably guess what the last state he went to. New Jersey? Hawaii. Oh. Because he was going from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. Oh, okay. He was practically road tripping it in his little English car, which I thought was cute. Okay, that is kind of awesome to hear. But yeah. <coughs> and what did he say about Hawaii? Well, he really liked it for what it was. He just said a fact about that. I did not. Oh, yeah, sure, why not? Let's find out what that He said says. a little fact about that. I didn't even realize that. Mm. Hawaii is the most southern state in America. Technically, yeah. I was like, huh. Anyway, let's just leap into there and... Uh, no, it's another low card one. Well, if we can get nine, that's decent. Yeah. That's good for aerial enemies. True. But, uh... Yeah, no, um... 
Come on, open the box. Thank you. <laughs> it's a chest. You dummy. <laughs> but yeah, no, um... Yeah, <laughs> that kind of blew my mind when he said it. I was like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. I looked at the map and it's like, yeah, it is the lowest. I thought it was like, even on the, was it longitude? I uh, think so. Even on the longitude, correct me if I'm longitude, wrong. Or, um, I know, it's longitude. The point is, the horizontal thing. Oh. Yeah, latitude. Latitude? I believe so. Okay, what you people in the comments watching this video, you know what I mean. On the horizontal line, I thought it was more even with like San Diego or LA. Right. But now it's, it's much southern than that. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn. I All feel right. like an idiot now. Well... Yep, well, um, so that concludes this episode. Um, tune in next time where we open this door and slay a dragon. Yeah. To be continued, folks. To slay Wait. a dragon. What? Okay, maybe not yet. Because uh, the thing's We're like, close. We're, we're close to slaying a dragon. We're close to you, baby. <laughs>